So you're out on your adventure and you're having a great time and then all of a sudden your bike starts wiggling, it starts wobbling and you don't know for sure what's even going on yet. So let's get to the video. Flats are part of a moto adventure. They're going to happen. From time to time they may not happen every trip and they may not happen to you for years to come. But it is something that is potentially there and could potentially happen and when it does you want to make sure that you have the right tools for the job. We were recently asked on the Gen 3 Tribe. The Gen 3 Tribe is a Facebook group that we have started to help others in sharing their experience with the Gen 3 KLR as well as other things. If you guys want I'll post the link down below and you can actually check that out. In today's video, what we're going to be talking about, we're going to be discussing one of the questions that recently came up from Carlos in the Gen 3 tribe. And his question was basically this. He asked if anybody could recommend a tire changing toolkit that is reasonably priced and or what are the size of the axle nuts on the Gen 3 KLR and the tools that you would need to change the tire out in the field. So that's what we're going to be doing today in today's video. I appreciate you checking out the video. If you're new to the channel, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dale, and I'd also like to welcome you to the channel. If you're a regular on our channel, welcome back, guys, and let's go ahead and get to the video. Real quick, I know not everybody's a fan of Facebook, and I recognize that fact. We have created a PDF covering the tools that we're going to have in this video, so you don't have to make a list. You can go over to our website that we recently started, it's called Heartland Moto Gear. This will be a PDF that you can download for free. Again, I'll put a link in the description so that you can get your free copy of the list. Because this is basically everything that we carry as far as tire changing tools, every trip and every adventure trip that we take. So to keep the video real short and real quick, I'm just going to go through the list real quick. I'll also have some B-roll going and I'll show you the tools additionally as we go through them. Number one tire changing spoons. That's important. The KLR, most guys only carry two. I'm going to suggest carrying three. Two on the list is going to be a 27 millimeter socket and that's going to be for your rear axle in case you need to change the rear tire. And then for the front you need a 14 millimeter Allen key. That Allen key is really important on the new Gen 3 KLRs. You didn't have to have that in the past. So if you're a, coming from a previous generation to the new generation, take note of that specifically because it is something that you won't be able to change your tire with on the front unless you have that. The next thing on the list is going to be a small breakover bar with an adapter. I only use the word adapter and I'll kind of show you what I'm using because that's a big socket so it's a half inch drive. I don't want a half inch drive breakover bar so I'm using a 3 8 so I've got the 3 8 to half inch adapter. One of the things that's actually kind of comical, I didn't think I had it when I went to Michigan and my buddies had a flat. Well I had it connected to the 14 millimeter Allen wrench so it didn't even dawn on me. I actually had it either way. When you're changing your tire, take your time, don't get frustrated. Spare tube, at minimum you're going to want a front spare tube and you can, this can also be folded up and used in the rear. If you have room in your bag, take both, a rear and a front. A small air pump. The air pump we used is made by Cycle Pump. I've had this thing for six, seven, eight years now. I don't know for sure. You can go back. We did a video a long, long time ago, back when I didn't even really know what I was doing on YouTube. But that thing, I can tell you, it still works. I use it regularly, and I also carry it in my Jeep for airing down when I'm using the Jeep on off-road trails as well. It's, uh, it's a great pump. It's heavy duty. It's not going to be what I consider cheap. What I'm going to consider it to be is quality, something that isn't going to break on you out in the field. Like say you're going to spend a little bit more money on that than you are a cheap one from the store, but you don't have to worry about it getting wet and not working. You don't have to worry about it breaking in your bag and not working. You don't have to worry if you go down and crash it not working. It's built heavy duty and it's built by a rider for riders. Number seven on the list is going to be baby powder or something equivalent. I've got a little tube. I've got baby powder in it. 
if you guys are already using baby powder for your boots or whatever else, I got a small little travel deal that I carry in my tank bag. You can also use that. That helps with uh, scent control with <laughs> your dirty boots as well as if you need it for a tire change. The next thing is going to be some sort of tire lube. Cycle Pump again has a tube of lube that they sell with their kit. You can buy that additionally as well. Or just use Dawn dishwashing so I've had really good luck with that. The next thing on the list is going to be a valve stem chaser and that's going to be something that you can simply put through your wheel and, and kind of weave it in between the tube and the tire. Grab a hold of your valve stem and it just makes it easier to pull it through the hole. Next up on that will accompany that is going to be needle nose pliers. Sometimes, if depending on the tires, I can tell you right now, and I started to do a tire review video, but I'm trying to keep this strictly the tire changing kit, so that review will come later. But the tires that we have on this bike have extremely stiff sidewalls, so having a pair of needle nose helps it help you get the valve stem in even using the chaser. Next thing on the deal is going to be optional. This could be rim protectors. If you're out in the field and you don't want to scratch off all the black paint on your rims using your tire tools, those are real cheap. I'll show you a picture of those as well. The next thing is going to be a small tarp. One of the things that I love about the kit that I'm using from Bead Breaker is that actually all your tools fit in this kit and it folds up. And now you've got a tarp that's big enough to lay your wheel on. You don't have to worry about getting sand in your axle or, or dirt in your axle or any of that. It's just a good way to keep everything clean, dirt and sand free, especially if you're changing on the side of the road or on a trail. Next thing up is going to be towels. Clean your hands after you're done with repairs. You don't want to be putting grease and stuff in your riding gloves. The guy who owns CyclePump.com also has what he calls a bead breaker. We have carried that in the past for the African Twin, and when we're on solo trips, that's something that I will take. If I know I'm going to be on a trip with somebody else, I may or may not take it, because you can actually use your kickstand on your bike and the weight of the bike and shove that over on your tire to break that bead as well, so that's one less tool to carry with you. Another thing that a lot of guys don't think about and consider, but one thing that we always do anytime that we're changing out our tires, we change out the tubes. I also purchase the heavy-duty tubes. You guys can do, do some research and find out, but there's several companies that make great heavy duty tubes for your tires. That will go a long ways in, in helping you as well, and it will help eliminate flights. Again, guys, for the one-stop shop, if you're looking for almost all the tools in one place, run over to CyclePop.com and check out what he's got. He's been putting this tool kit together for a long time. Like I say, I've got the air compressor, I've got the bead breaker kit, and I've got the everything that you're going to need in one nice package that even comes with the canvas bag to lay your wheel on. Again guys, this isn't super cheap, but it's super quality. It's stuff that's going to last and it's made by a rider for a rider. So if that's something that interests you, you're going to be helping other support another locally owned USA owned business. The guy's great people. If you have any questions, reach out to him. Tell him that you heard about it here on Heartland Dual Sport. And again, guys, if you like our video, give us a big thumbs up. If you know anybody that's into motorcycle adventures, and it doesn't matter if you have a KLR or not, we put this list together. You can check it out and download it. It's for free on our website at heartlandmotogear.com. By the time this video airs, you go over to the products, and it's going to be free. Guys, help yourself to the list. There's also another page in the back of it for notes so if you don't have a KLR you can write down the specifics tools that you're going to need to change your tires. Real quick one other thing that we didn't discuss and it's going to be kind of a bonus round is making a tool that you can use to lift your bike up and keep it up so that you can actually take the wheel off in the field and I've mentioned this in the past and it's something that I've made and I carry. Mine's made out of a piece of wood I'll show you a picture of that on the other side of the piece of wood, I've got a piece of leather on there so that you can strop your knife when you're sitting around camp and keep your knife razor sharp as well. So again, guys, I know there's other guys out there. The Brotherhood of the Bearded Pigs have done a video short on using a crutch and the adjustability of it on how to make one with an old crutch that you can find a goodwill or whatever else. There's other people who actually make tools specifically like that. 
and there's plenty of guys out there that will help you if you just want to research into it more. Again, guys, we're trying to keep this video short. Adventure season is coming to an end here in East Texas. It's getting cold enough. There's a winter advisory for this weekend, and I know most of you guys that are up north, especially like my friends up in Michigan, you guys have already got a foot of snow and they're predicting another foot. This is a great time to get out in your shop. You can get out there, start getting all your tools together. Next week, we're gonna be doing a moto camping list and the tools or the things that we use for moto camping. And it doesn't matter if you're talking about spring, winter, or fall camping or the heat of the summer camping. So if you guys haven't subscribed, I'd love to talk you into subscribing. As always, may you have a blessed week and let's go ride.